Memorial Day, video game conventions, and a trip to Houston gone wrong. He's Adrian, I'm Steph, and welcome to Talks with Adrian and Steph. So for Memorial Day weekend this year, uh, my brothers and I decided we were going to take a guy's trip, you know, um, head out of town, go do a little exploring and see, you know, what we could find. Uh, we took a little road trip over to Houston, Texas, and we had a lot of things planned for the weekend. You know, number one, we were going there for a video game convention that we had planned for uh, quite a while, you know. Um, so we, so we went over there to, to attend this video game convention. It's a two day convention, but we just, we just booked, you know, over the first day we were going to go check everything out, buy a bunch of, um, games and check out, see what was going on there at the convention. And then the next day we were planning to, you know, just kind of explore Houston, go try a bunch of different restaurants, go check out some coffee shops and some stores and such, and just kind of have, you know, just a chill laid back hangout day. So, uh, if you don't know, uh, my brothers and I were kind of pretty big nerds. We, uh, <laughs> we do a lot of like play a lot of video games. Um, I collect a lot. Uh, one of my brothers collects a lot, and the other one, the youngest one, Jared, he's 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 getting there. He's on his way to collecting. But we no, no, have... no, no, no. Hold up, what? hold up. Let's what? go this way. Okay. So okay. what do you got? So the the thing with these three brothers is this. So Adrian and Brock, which is the middle brother. They're nerds. They're like proper, proper nerds. Like you talk to them about video games and consoles and stuff. And they, they just, they're proper nerds. The youngest one, Jared, is, he's, he's so sweet, but he wants to like kind of hang out with the big bros, right? So he like (laughs) tries his best to be all like, oh, I love gaming. I love, but he really is not into it all that much. They both, both of these older brothers would love for Jared to be a dude, but he's not as into it as these well, two are. He's no, he's into his specific like vein, yeah. right? And his lane, the things that he's into, that's what he's into, and it's very much like this. <laughs> Brock and I, we're kind of scattershot. We're into like a million different things, and we're into just like collecting, right? So yeah, so that I think that's it's, the difference. Jared's not as into collecting individual things that he likes. So, yeah, but Brock and I will buy like almost anything. <laughs> So Jared and I, we've all, we've talked about like when Adrian and I get married and we do these conventions, what's going to happen? And so Jared and I were like, we'll go the first day and then we'll just <laughs> kind of go get out, go get food, <laughs> hang out and just let these two nerds be there. So he's like, yeah, I need somebody with me. <laughs> <laughs> let me back up a little bit here and um, let's let's kind of explain like what Retropalooza is for for everybody here maybe nobody is maybe you haven't been to a gaming convention it's kind of a niche thing um but basically what this is retro palooza it's an annual um convention in houston there's also one up in the arlington dallas fort worth area um but basically it's just a bunch of vendors and people who get together uh usually at the convention center and they just have a bunch of like old retro like video games and they're for sale they have like booths where you can like play different games they'll sometimes have arcade rooms they'll have like youtubers and different people in the community there giving talks and presentations and such they'll often like have tables where you can go and get autographs or some of them even like sell some stuff of their own so it's really a lot of collectors um and vendors who are there Sometimes there'll so be last people year, literally with just like their own collection there selling some of it or trading some of it. So buy, sell, and trade. It's kind of the the thing. So last year, um, you guys went to the one in Arlington, mm-hmm. the Dallas area, and you really enjoyed it. You really liked it. Um, they got they got like the hotel right across from the center the con- where the convention was. And so everybody was there and, you know, it was like, it was such a fun time. So they all were very excited to do the Retropalooza Houston. Right. So um, how far is it from a drive from your parents to uh, Houston? Because that's where you went to to pick up your brothers. (laughs) Yeah. So from there to where we were staying, it was really about two hours. So it's pretty close. Um, just kind of a quick trip. Um, so two hours there. And then we we're staying at a hotel that was actually kind of far from the convention center. 
uh, the the location around Houston, they didn't really have any hotels nearby. Also, mm-hmm. somebody did not want me to help look for hotels and this would come into play when the story kind of goes forward because i said do you want me to help you book the thing oh we'll do it we still have a week we still have a week cut to like a day before (laughs) the convention like we don't have a place to stay well because the hotels in that area they're all like they're either one super sketchy or super expensive like it's weird because like if you go into like the main part of Houston, you can find all ranges of hotels. But where we were staying, mm-hmm. like the Pasadena area, it's just like that's, those are the options: really expensive or like really like sketchy. So yeah, so you get to uh, Pasadena, mm-hmm. where the uh, convention was, and um, then what? What's the experience once you, for people like I, I have never been to a gaming convention before, and maybe a lot of people listening to this podcast haven't been to a convention. So, what what's the experience? What's like? What do you have to do to go in? Is it a free for all? Is it like you know different levels of tickets? Like what's what's happening? Yeah, yeah. So you can. You can do like a VIP pass at this place where you basically get in an hour before general admission. So those doors open at 9 and then everyone else has to wait till 10. So we got there about 9.40 or so and checked in. Go to the table and check in. They give you your badge um, and you basically just wait around for 10 o'clock. So as soon as as soon as soon 10 o'clock rolls around, everybody's like in the in like kind of the foyer area. And the doors open and everybody just rushes in. And it's kind of a mad dash at the beginning because um, right in the first like couple of hours of the convention, that's when like the best deals, you're going to find the best deals (laughs) before people actually go through and buy out everything. So you want to really quickly kind of make a quick pass through and find some booths and try to find those really good deals before everybody else gets there. So that's what we were at on the first part. So so is this convention just like so you go buy things, get deals or do do they also have like other like gamers, creators in that space talking about I don't know, gaming? Yeah, yeah, it's it's the whole like it's the whole community. There's um like I mentioned at the beginning, there's YouTubers, there's um different content creators. They're all there to Um, Some are there to trade and sell games and buy some and whatnot. And then some are there Mm -hmm. just to kind of talk, you know, and give like presentations and such. So those are all really cool aspects of it. Um, But the main reason we go is for the buy, sell, trade kind of thing. We're trying to find some good deals and trade some stuff. So we have some extra, extra video games. So that's always the best thing is trading. If you can find someone who is willing to do like a good trade, that's like generally... A, a good pro thing for both people you know so if if you if you watch this podcast on youtube um you will see that in adrian's background you will always see something different but um right now for a while it's just been the winnie the pooh tv <laughs> but he'll have like little game stacks and stuff and if you ever wonder why that is it's because of this he he likes to collect games likes to resell that's that's his side hustle you know <laughs> he's a hustler baby um yeah. but it's always i guess like when you're doing it by yourself yeah. it kind of feels like very i don't know isolating and you go into the space where everybody is doing the exact same thing and i think it's nice for you to like get tips and tricks from people or just kind of build a community of people who are doing the exact same thing as you because sometimes people don't understand uh what you're doing because when i explain it to people they have no idea (laughs) yeah so that's that's what it is right it's it's the trading aspect of it and there's a lot of people who are connected into this and interested in doing it and there's a lot of like prices have been all over the place and there's a lot of people who have made some serious money doing this people who have like collected for a long time and now all of a sudden Mm -hmm. their their things are worth like two three four sometimes even ten times the price that they were you know (laughs) it's some people have uh made made some money because there's a lot of people wanting to collect right now so 
It's a pretty cool so environment. So you bought, you and your brothers bought a bunch of stuff, which if you want to know detailed in what they bought, you can, uh, the vlog drops soon, so you can check that out. So, but I want to talk more about like this experience. How was it different than last year when you went to Arlington? Well, this year, um, one, we're in Houston, which, um, isn't my favorite city in the world. Um, no offense to any of <laughs> that's Houston just that's people. just sugarcoating um, it, Adrian. Don't sugarcoat yeah. what you say. He okay, says okay. it's the worst. I'll place. Act, I actively dislike Houston. <laughs> I actively dislike it. I don't go there very often, and this trip kind of you know <laughs> reinforced <laughs> those beliefs and feelings I had. As we'll get to, this is foreshadowing. So you want to stick around and hear hear what happened. How this trip went a little bit awry. Um, <laughs> so how did it compare? Um, so Retropalooza Houston isn't the main one. So it was a bit smaller, um, than the Arlington one. Arlington is the main one. And honestly, that's the one mm -hmm. I would probably go to over. Um, it was way more convenient with the hotel being, you know, right by the convention center in Arlington. Mm -hmm. Um, there were more vendors, of course, there was more to see, more to do more uh mm -hmm. speakers and such so yeah i recommend if you can get up there if you want to check one out go to the go to the dallas one um so the scale of the one in arlington is is a lot bigger than the pasadena one right like in terms of number of people who attended number of vendors and just in general so did you get better deals because there were less people or because because there were less people, the deals weren't that great. Yeah, there were just fewer. There were just fewer options. So that that was the thing. There was less to look through, less to dig through. Um, but there were fewer people there. Um, mm -hmm. So I mean, it kind of it kind of balanced out. You know, we still got some pretty good deals, but overall, we got a ton of really good deals at the Arlington one. Yeah. So you can make it work. You can make it work, but you know, I would I would rather you know go to the bigger one. So what kind of what kind of games and like what can people expect if they plan on going? Like what kind of games, what kind of you know are there newer games, popular games, are they very obscure games, are they only games? Yeah, there's really there's really a little bit of everything, you know, modern modern console games, older stuff from like the 80s and 90s. Uh, you can get really anything that you could think of pretty much um but the main thing like people go there for i think are like really big collectors they're looking for those really like obscure games or games mm -hmm. that are in like a certain condition maybe they're like complete in box um you know someone would go there for probably something like this right so this is an old game boy advance game called astro boy omega factor it's kind of rare um and you don't see it complete in the box with the box, the manual, and the game. Usually it'll be just the loose cartridge. Um, so they would go there for something like this, kind of. Um, and this is the kind of stuff that I like to bring to trade. So if I have, like, rarer things that I don't really want that much, I'll bring that, and then you can trade it for something, you know, that's kind of expensive that you really do want. So um, it's usually a two-day convention. Mm -hmm. And like you said, the entire rush is in the on the first day and the first half. You need to go in, get your deals, you know, go, what do you call, rummage through <laughs> things. So, uh, without without like specifics, which I know because in the vlog we talk, you talk about it. How many games? <laughs> or things did you buy at this convention and if you're okay with it how much did you kind of drop um I, I don't even know i mean we we together we bought probably about 30 things 30 or 35 different things um but i think personally i don't think i spent but maybe like a hundred dollars wow on things. yeah mm -hmm. um I'm trying to remember if there was any, like, I didn't really buy any, like, high-budget expensive things. Uh, most of what I did was trade um, mm -hmm. for, like, the price, a couple of pricier things that I got. So, yeah, it was probably, like, $100, $120 maybe that I spent. So, it really, I really didn't spend much um, because 
the a lot of the stuff that people had there was not stuff that I was really looking for or was in a condition that I wasn't really looking for. So um, there wasn't really a ton that I wanted actually. So kind of sad. Um, but Brock got some <laughs> Brock got some good deals as well too. So mm-hmm. and you, and Jared got some minted Pokemon cards. Yeah, Jared got some uh, some graded Pokemon cards. Some really cool stuff. So I know he was like really happy yeah. about that. So let's talk about the thing why people actually have sticked around for the juicy part, the the interesting part of what went wrong <laughs> on this trip. Why was your Vetripalooza 2022 experience ruined forever? <laughs> the city of Houston strikes again. So as you mentioned, um, we only did the one day of the convention. Um <laughs> So day two of the convention is actually when you can really get good deals too because a lot of booths will be like, you know, 50% off or something because they don't want to have to load it up and bring it back, you know, so you can get some good deals on some stuff sometimes. But we were like, let's just do the one day and then we'll explore Houston, right? We'll have we'll have kind of a chill laid back day of just, you know, checking out some shops and restaurants and mm-hmm. coffee shops and things. And uh, so that's what we plan to do. So Sunday morning, we wake up and get our coffee at the hotel. We get ready. We pack up and clean up the room and get ready to check out. Uh, we go and load up the load up the car, and we check out of the hotel. And things are great. And then we get in to the car, and I start it up. <laughs> and it's immediately the loudest sound <laughs> I've ever heard. And I know, like, as soon as it happens, I say, oh, no, you got to be kidding me. Because I knew exactly what it was. I knew exactly what happened because I know exactly where I am. And I get out. I kill the car, get out, go around and look under it. And just exactly as I expected, exactly as I thought it would be, somebody in the middle of the night got under my car and cut off my catalytic converter, which is a piece that goes in the exhaust system. Um, So they stole the catalytic converter from my car (laughs) while we were sleeping from the hotel parking lot. And so that began a whole ordeal and really threw off our morning. So we had this fun brunch plan. (laughs) We were going to go get brunch and then go shopping and stuff and that just immediately went out the door because i had to go into the hotel they had to pull the camera footage had to call the police to file a police report had to contact my insurance and take pictures so it was a whole like kind of two hour ordeal at the hotel and so yeah so all of that such a headache such a headache more than anything it's just an inconvenience right because it's it's just so annoying. It's all these people you got to talk to and you got to worry about getting it fixed. And I still have to get back home for work and all of that. So it's just super annoying, super annoying. And I think it, it it's a lot worse because um, not only did you have a great day planned, which is a different thing, but it was like the weekend with the boys, you know, and all of that. But you had a two-hour the loudest ride back home. So I called Adrian like on FaceTime because he told like, hey, this is what happened. Da, 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 da. And I was like, okay. And it was night time for me, I think. And I woke up and I called him and he answered. He's like, I cannot hear you. It's so loud in this car. Cause, cause <laughs> it was just where, like, Because <laughs> where it's cut off, it makes your exhaust instead of going out of the back of the car, it's like directly under like the cabin, like under where you're sitting. So it's just like (laughs) your engine is just like pumping out exhaust directly under you. So you can smell the, you can smell the exhaust while you're driving and you're driving down the interstate. So I'm going like 75. And so it's just like wide open, (laughs) like nonstop. And so we, we decided, you know, When I left there, when everything was good to go at the hotel, we were just like, all right, I know we had this whole day planned, but let's just, let's just head back towards the house. You know, we have a two hour drive, so we'll kind of take our time, um, and just get back home. 
um, instead of instead of doing all this. So yeah, it was a very long, loud ride back home. I, it I thought it was so funny because uh, Adrian and Brock's younger brother Jared loves to sleep in the car. He has that thing of when you get in the car on a long drive. Oh, he he's instantly just is out. asleep. He's gone. <laughs> instantly he reminds me so much of my youngest sister who like as soon as she gets in the car she's just out like it's out cold like you you there's no movement there's no sound there's just like <laughs> and every yep, time i call Adrian, they're like oh he's asleep but because of how loud it was i don't think that poor fellow got to sleep no, he was he was struggling, but he could sleep through anything pretty much. So I don't doubt that he, he got some shut eye. Um, but we we kind of made the most of it, though, I have to say. You know, we stopped we stopped in a city on the way in for we got ramen, really good ramen shop and like a little store there. So we, we did a couple of things on the way back. It's just it, it kind of sucks, though, because it ruined our uh, it ruined our plans. Also, someone could make a couple hundred bucks from scrapping my uh catalytic converter but so just just so you all know everything is fine now uh adrian got his car fixed and i mean nobody got hurt no there's no harm that happened to anybody mm. so that was good they all reached home safe and the car didn't explode <laughs> on the way nothing like that happened right. so it was just it was just one of those like it's an inconvenience, right? <laughs> and Such it's a also pain. a, it's also like to get the part done again is expensive, and the insurance and all of that. Yeah, because so, that that but, was the next part of it, right? Is that after I got back to my parents' house, I then had a three hour drive back to my place, um, to go to work and everything. I had to get it fixed before I left. I didn't want to have to drive all the way back home again and then try to get it fixed so we had to find a good shop that would that would repair it and um thankfully my uncle had a good hookup so the guy uh charged a really really fair price really good price for this repair so i ended up getting a new one put on and everything it's a whole ordeal but i'm glad that it kind of resolved <laughs> kind of resolved in a uh a somewhat positive light I spent a couple more days there at the house and we, we hung out and played some games and Brock and I mm -hmm. actually did a little bit of recording and work. So it ended up yeah. being a good, a good little, good little state anyway, even though it didn't yeah. work out exactly as we planned. Uh, we ended up you throwing got to a crawfish boil, you know, yeah. <laughs> having a lot of really you good celebrated, food. You celebrated an early Father's Day with your right. dad and all of that happens. It was good. So, um... There is there is a story that Adrian has been keeping from me for the past. Well, it's been two weeks now that we're recording from when Red Trapalooza happened. Um, and Adrian goes, I do not want to tell you the story. It's a fun story. I want to tell it to you on the podcast. So there is a genuine reaction to what happened. So we've been waiting to record this this episode so it's been two weeks since retropalooza happened as of this recording and um so my love <laughs> so you're ready yeah, to this hear is the time i'm guessing she's ready to hear you <laughs> I, I am i'm so sick of hearing like it's it's such a great story it, you can't i can't wait to tell you this i'm sick of listening to it i want to know what the story is well without further ado here we go so, in the middle of the night, so Stephanie is asleep, um, her night, right? So, in the middle of the night, Stephanie gets a bunch of messages from me. I know. And I don't know if you checked that while you were, like, if you woke up or anything, but you, um, at least when you woke up, did you get them whenever you woke up or did you? I don't, I don't even remember. I just remember they're just tables. And I think I just sent you, like, question marks, like, huh? So it could have been like I was half asleep. I don't even know what was happening. So so I sent her um, some messages. There's a bunch of pictures. Um, I sent her a bunch of pictures of tables and like furniture. And then after, I think it was like seven or eight pictures. And after I just said, I'll tell you about this later. <laughs> so it's the most random I was like, thing. So in my head, 
I think I was like kind of like like waking up because Adrian also likes to go to Goodwill. So I was like, oh, he must have seen furniture at Goodwill that he wants us to buy for our house whenever we set it up. And I was like, okay. But then he goes, well, that text came and I was like, wait, what? Did you buy <laughs> furniture and not tell me? <laughs> so here's here's what happened. Let's rewind a bit. So this is Saturday. So this is after we get through at the convention. Um, so that afternoon we decide, oh, let's, let's go check out some uh, different thrift stores around, around the Houston area and where we were staying. Uh, there were quite a few nearby, so we decided we'd go explore cause we love, you know, trying to find some cool, like good deals and stuff. So we're at this one and me and Brock go in, Jared's sleeping in the back seat. So he just stays in there <laughs> in the parking lot in like the hundred degree heat. He's like in the back, like oh just sweating, gosh. and he's like, "I'm not going in there. I'm sleeping." So, <laughs> so he legit like stays in the car and just sleeps. Did he crack the, the window open for him? Yeah, I had to make him do it. I was like, "Look, crack that window back there," and I rolled the ones in the front down because he he was just gonna sit in there and just cook, like a freaking <laughs> like a freaking boiled egg or something. Sweaty old sweaty old doofus. Oh my gosh! <laughs> so so me and Brock we go into this go into this uh thrift store you know and we're we're finding some cool stuff looking through their clothes finding some cool t-shirts and um some old random things and brock finds a couple of cool things i think he bought like a hat and like some like Mm -hmm. a movie or something so we found some like good deals and you know we're we're like all right let's let's roll out of here and everything so he goes and stands in line and it's just like the slowest moving line ever (laughs) and um i as we're like getting ready to leave i'm like brock i don't even say anything i just get like wide-eyed because i need to leave now if you catch my drift like i need to leave now earlier in the day emergency yeah earlier in the day i had eaten something and it did not it did not really sit with me so i was like i need to go <laughs> now and so i'm like looking around the store like is there a bathroom here is there a bathroom i like ask an employee and they're like there's no bathroom at this place and oh, i'm no. like kind of freaking out a little bit cuz it's one of those there's going to be an issue <laughs> like i'm it's gonna going to be carnage <laughs> i am about to poop my pants like so Brock's in line and he's standing there and it's like the slowest line ever like this this guy has like a a basket like full of clothes and such so it's just taking forever poor lady behind the Mm -hmm. counter is just like doing all she can to get through but it's taking forever so like I literally just walk outside I just go I don't even tell him where I'm going or what I'm doing (laughs) I'm just like starting to sweat you know how you get that sweat oh no oh yeah Um, Mm -hmm. and so it's, I'm like walking to the car and like clenching my (laughs) cheeks, you know, like squeezing, trying to make sure nothing comes out because it's like, it's like knocking on the door. It's like barging, but the barge, barge on the door. (laughs) Yeah, it's bad. And then you like walk outside and it's like hot and you're already like sweating like profusely and stuff. And so... (laughs) I'm over there just like walking like tensed up to the car and I'm and we're we're in this we're in this uh parking parking lot it's like shopping oh. center so there's all these different like shops and stuff and I'm looking around and trying to trying to see like you know who has a bathroom here and I'm looking around and it's like a insurance agency and I'm like they're not gonna have a public restroom and I'm looking over here and I'm like they're not gonna have a restroom and like everywhere I'm looking there's no there's no place that would have like a bathroom you know they're all like all like these smaller like businesses and shops and stuff and i'm like freaking out because i'm like there's no bathroom here it's a one-way street to get down the road like it's it's gonna be impossible to find a bathroom and like oh no i'm i'm like i'm literally about to poop in this parking lot like i'm about to poop on the ground in this parking lot if i can't find a a bathroom um so i'm looking i'm looking and right across (laughs) right across i'm like this is the only place that could potentially have a bathroom right here and i see 
a lovely, beautiful little furniture store. <laughs> Some of you pooped in the tables. <laughs> <laughs> and so, don't so, tell me you pooped at the tables. <laughs> No, Adrian, 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 look me in the eyes and say you did not poop in uh, the table. I didn't poop in the table. I promise I didn't okay. poop in the table. Oh um, my but God. this is what happened. So I hop in the car and I'm like sitting on my seat, like kind of sideways, you know, so I can like <laughs> squeeze together so nothing like seeps out. <laughs> and Jared, Jared's like, what are y'all done already? Where's Brock? And I'm like, He's he's inside. I I gotta go. We gotta go. And so I drive over to the little furniture store across the um, okay parking lot, and put it in parking. I'm like, all right, I'll be I'll be right back. And then I'm walking, and I'm praying. I'm like, please, please have a bathroom in this place, please. Um, sweat just like drenching my face and stuff. So I I walk up to the door and the the automatic door is like broken. So I'm like, oh my God, are they closed? And the guy's like, no, no, you just have to open it. So I have to like pull open the door and like go in and shut it behind behind me. And then when I walk in, because you know, a furniture store, you know, they they have salesmen. They want to like, you know, show you different things and talk you through stuff. And... (laughs) So the, the gentleman there, I mean, he's super nice. God bless him. Um, so he comes up and he's like, Hey, can I help you? Uh, can I help you find anything today? What, what are you looking for? And I'm like, um, I'm looking for, uh, tables. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm trying to, f- and he's like, Oh yeah. What, what, like what kind of table? And I'm like, you know, just tables, <laughs> any table. <laughs> and then he's like, Oh, you mean like, like a, like a dining table or like a, oh, no, no, like a, like a, like a end table or, or something. Right. <laughs> Um, he's like, oh yeah, yeah, we have, we have quite a few, we have quite a few. And he's like, yeah, if you look over here, our furniture sets are on this side and you can walk through. And then in the back there, we have some other kinds of tables. So just kind of feel free to walk around and let me know if you need anything. And I'm like, and he goes on and goes on and I'm like, sir, do you, do you guys have a bathroom? (laughs) (laughs) Like in the middle of him, like saying this, I'm like, yeah, I think I'm going to, I'm going to check these out, but let me, I'm going to run to the bathroom real quick. (laughs) And so, <laughs> and so he's like, yeah, yeah, straight down the hallway there. And I'm like, yes, oh my God, yes. I'm like freaking out at this point because it's, it's like, it's coming. It's like coming out. Um, and so, so I'm like, okay, I'm going to, I'll check these out and everything. And so I just beeline for the bathroom. I walk straight there and it's down this like long hallway in the back. And then I notice I'm looking at it and I notice it's a single stall bathroom and I'm like, Oh no, is someone Wait, in there? Just, like, like it's a bath. It's not, not like a, like a public bathroom with like multiple stalls and stuff. It's like oh, you open okay. the door and it's one room, one toilet. That's it. Oh, okay. 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 And okay. I'm, I'm just like, please, please be open. Please be open. And I grab the handle and yeah, it's open. So, oh. <laughs> and and it's like one of those like freeze frame things where like I throw open the door and like lock it behind me. Um, I'm glad I remember to even do that. And I like just rush over and like it's. <laughs> let's see if I can like. It's like time. It's like time just suddenly slowed time down. Is, like for standing you. still. And it's like <laughs> if I could play back, play back like the, the time, the time of it. It's like yeah, time is frozen. I'm drenched in sweat, <laughs> right? And. It's like as soon as I like get my pants down, like I'm not even on the toilet yet. And like it's just a free fall. It's just like gravity takes over. And as soon as it happens, I'm like, oh, no, I'm I feel so sorry because I'm going to destroy this place. It's going to it's so bad. (laughs) But but I made it. I made it. I made it in the time. I made it in time. I didn't soil my trousers and I was just sweating so hard sitting there. So, so it was like that that (laughs) feeling of like relief, like just overwhelming relief, but also like, like, you know, disappointment in yourself. Like, oh my gosh, you, you freaking baby. You couldn't even hold your poop, you know? I well, I will say this. So demeaning. Great men have 
great men have fallen because <laughs> of stomach issues. <laughs> Here I sit, I was, all I was, brokenhearted. Uh, I was I was listening to this YouTuber who was saying like they poop their pants at least twice a year, and I was like, "What are you doing that you're pooping your pants twice, twice a year?" But, a year? but basically, like it happens twice every year, and it's like at some point their body is just is not like they are in situations that it's just Look. not like. Before before that weekend, I'd probably say, yeah, right. But I get it now. I get it. I was moments away from that. Like, moments away. If this place hadn't had a bathroom, oh that would have been me. I would have literally gone into the parking lot and just probably pooped my pants. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> and then gone to the hotel and changed. I waited two weeks for the most epic poop story. But wait, that's but not even... That? That's not... Exactly, exactly. So... Okay. So, uh, there's more to this story, y'all. We're not done yet. All right. So, oh. Oh, my God. There's, so, like, levels. Yeah, yeah, because I, I have to fill this in. So, okay. I didn't want to just show up to this furniture store, destroy their bathroom, and leave, right? I'm not... I'm a man of moral integrity i have <laughs> i have some character here right i'm not just gonna blow it up and go just the blow and go that's not that's not oh my style my okay so okay. when i get out you know i do my deed I plant my seed and leave ew <laughs> yeah and make my deposit Don't say that yeah <laughs> make my deposit. Ew. i plant my seed that's that's something that's something weird all right um so i so i leave out and um I start looking around at the tables because I'm like, I'm not just going to leave right after I do this. Spend like 15 mm -hmm. minutes in their bathroom and then just leave. No. I'll get some integrity. Yeah. Um, okay. So I decide to walk around. I'm looking at their furniture and stuff. And then later on, the guy comes on out and he's like, did you find everything all right and everything? I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm just looking. And he's like, so what What exactly are you looking for? Like, I was like, oh, I'm looking for some end tables. Um and he was for like for like an apartment you know and the guy was like oh really so where where are you living did you just move into town or something and i'm like well my uh my fiance and i are looking at moving <laughs> here and so i'm like making up this whole story about about how you know we're looking at we're looking at moving you know and i'm i got to get some uh because i didn't want to buy anything like i had zero intention of buying any anything but i was like i've got to i'm gonna see if i get her approval on any of this furniture um and then maybe we'll come back maybe tomorrow because we're here for the weekend checking out places <laughs> and oh and God. and um <laughs> so we're checking out we're checking out places for the weekend. Um, so maybe tomorrow, you know, if we find something, we'll bring the bring the truck and, you know, come pick it up. Oh, my. So you had this whole story. I had a story. whole thing. Yeah, a whole thing. A whole thing. And so I'm walking around. Oh I'm, God. like, taking pictures of different of different um, end table sets and coffee tables and stuff. I went around. I think I sent seven or eight pictures to, to Stephanie because I was you like, I'm going to send this. I, I told him I was like I'm gonna send this to her and see if she likes any of these if she's if these will match what we're what we're doing um, <laughs> and I was like I don't want to be like lying so let me actually send it I'll send it to her and she can be like she can let me know you know which one she likes or which one she doesn't like I do gotta say though like most of those things were like really nice they were like real wood and like made pretty well. Um, they had some cool ones that like lifted up and like you had all this storage in, in it and everything. Whole sets of like three end tables. Oh my and goodness. Tables. You like, had this. Can I say this? It's like you're so not innocent, but it's like you're like, just so that that guy doesn't feel like I'm lying, even though I'm lying, I'm going to send Stevie all of these stuff just so that there's some kind of reality. <laughs> in this yeah. big lie of mine. <laughs> there's there's just Oh my goodness. It's like it's like one of those I don't know, it's a it's a primal thing, right? When you're backed into a corner, when you're at the when you're at like the lowest, you'll do things you wouldn't normally do, you know? 
for like your survival <laughs> for your betterment this was uh this was my survival moment <laughs> oh my god that's why i just have random pictures of tables that's why it? you have okay. random pictures of tables and whenever we decorate our apartment we should probably buy some furniture from this guy so yeah be like actually sh she took longer to get over here than <laughs> <laughs> it's like three years later we show up hey you remember me it's like, yeah. We like the guy who the destroyed Yeah. <laughs> You're the guy who, I I feel so sorry for whoever went after you. I know. Um, I was thinking about to that. the bathroom. <laughs> but yeah, so this trip ha was was a lot of fun. And there's yeah. a lot more t that is in relation to this trip and extension of this trip. And I think it would be nice if we do another episode so that people can kind of take in your whole poop and <laughs> lying story and just kind of like digest that story. Di give, let's give them... What is <laughs> not this? digest the poop. What is this? The story, the story. So that they 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 have a week to process what just happened. <laughs> right? Sometimes it takes a little a little time to process. <laughs> yeah. So uh we'll we'll see you all next week. Uh we we have a new episode, a new podcast episode that comes out every Tuesday. But keep an eye out for this Saturday. We have uh, a vlog going up for Retropalooza and just like little it's and bits of like the inner workings and things that Adrian and his brothers uh, bought just a little fun little vlog so it'll be nice if you guys can check it out on YouTube make sure that you like subscribe do all the fun stuff um, if you're watching us on Spotify we have video version up and if you like it make sure that you let us know on Instagram and uh, you can head on to TikTok do all the fun stuff mm -hmm. and we will see you next Tuesday hope you have a great week ahead see you later we're Adrian and Steph everywhere you look bye <laughs>